Hi guys, today I'm interviewing a student from Parma University. The name just appeared and yeah, why don't you introduce yourself to us? Yeah. I'm Giacomo, um, a student representative starting second year this year uh, of the Italian medicine course in Parma. And I will talk with Sarah about the brand new uh, IMAT course starting this year, this fall in Piacenza of the same University of Parma. Yeah, it's it's so cool that uh, you agreed to come and talk with us because there's like a lot of mystery around the university and so many people are so excited and it's actually seeing, it's so nice seeing you guys be so proactive about it because we've never had anyone reach out wanting to give information to the students, you know, making uh, telegram groups in advance. Like, I feel like you guys are really, really proactive in welcoming the new students. Is this like a new initiative or is this something that's always been a thing? Oh. Actually, um, we have been this proactive since last year as uh, we uh, made the first version of the guide to the university that we are also sharing today on our Instagram and I, that I believe Sarah also shared on the Academat website or is going to share. Uh, we started, we did the first version only in Italian last year and this year we made a new version with updated information and also an English version for the Piacenza course. The groups thing is just since this year, we didn't do that last year. Yeah, so the guide is really, really nice. Like I actually read through it and I really wish every university would do something like this. I'm definitely going to be putting it on the website and on the Instagram and uh, like your guys' Instagram is tagged in this as well, because I really think that everyone who's considering Parma should really, really go and check all that stuff out. So to start the interview, uh, again, most of this information is going to be able to be found in the guide, but I think students prefer watching it and hearing it from a student. Could you walk me through how the timetables and the calendar is going to work? Like our class is going to be in the morning, in the evening. The timetable for the English course is not available on the uh University of Parma app and the meter on the uh, Agenda Studenti website, that is the website we use for our timetables other than the app, but it is available in a PDF file uh, on the courses website, which, uh, which URL uh, is, well, I'm not giving you a spelling of that, but we will put it somewhere. And yeah, there's this PDF just in the homepage and they are going to have classes since uh, the 18th of October and both in the morning and in the afternoon, starting 10.30 and ending at approximately uh, 5.30 p.m. But with no lectures on uh, Fridays apart from some Fridays when yeah, they are gonna have lectures in the morning. And this is gonna be like this uh, up until to December where they're gonna have lectures also on Fridays, but this is gonna be just two Fridays. And yeah, so lectures on most days, both in the morning and in the evening. Those Last are day of lectures. Those are pretty long days though. How come it's how come the days are so long? Is there like a foundation program or is there like a lunch break? Because morning to evening seems, you know, a long yeah, a long day. There's a lunch break. There's a lunch break uh from 1:30 p.m. to 2:30 p.m. And yeah, but on most days they're going to have uh, 6 hours, I see. Well, I believe this is because they are starting so late on the 18th of October and are also going to hand all their lectures um, in January. Well, they are going to have lectures till the last day of January, but they are not starting back um, up until the 10th of January. They're going to have no lectures from the 15th of December up to the 10th of January and then from up from the 10th to the 31st. And then, yeah, February is for exams. And well, here it says that also um, a, the week before Christmas, 
uh, is for exams, but I don't believe it is going to be uh, real. I mean, for us, the Italian course, um, we only have exams at Christmas uh, for later years, no first years. Um, you can have uh, a, some uh yeah partial exams but no finals in that week if you are in first year because uh this is a part like the january the december sorry days are like the last dates for the uh september extra session those are the, there isn't a proper session in december actually it's just there so that professors can put up uh can put some dates of the yeah the full session also in december if they wish to because i don't know if it is like this in all italian universities yeah but here in parma uh exam dates of the same subject have to be uh at least 14 days apart from each other and uh, an important thing also is that in parma there isn't the salto d'appello so you can sit for an exam at every date uh, whether it's not like this in every italian university like in bologna i know that if you get uh, if you fail in one date you can't take the exam in the date right after the one but yeah i'm um, now i'm talking about other stuff so yeah for the timetable i believe this is pretty much it uh, the first the subjects they're gonna have in this First term are physics, chemistry, uh, inorganic and organic chemistry, uh, but also um, cell biology, histology, some um, microbiology. That's that's really early because we don't do micro until like almost the end of second year. Um, so we we can put all the. <laughs> Oh, okay. So it's unique for the English course that they're going to do micro so yeah, early. I believe this is not, I mean, this is not that much of micro because it's just one credit in oh, the okay. histology integrated course. Okay. Um, so I can put up the subjects that they're going to do in first year, but since we were kind of speaking of exams, do you know what the exam modalities are going to be like? Are they going to be mainly written, mainly oral, some written, some oral? Well, I can talk, obviously, for my experience in the Italian course, even though I believe the English course is not going to be that different also because most of the professors they're going to have are the same professors we have, uh, apart from some exceptions. But I, for what I know, um, like the, prof the histology professor is the same we have in the Italian course, and also the statistics one, uh, these are two subjects they have this term and yeah also the molecular biology professor and I'm not sure about genetics but that's not so important and yeah um, in first year uh, most exams are written but this is kind of an exception because later um, basically all the exams are orals uh, the the most notable exceptions in the Italian course, which are written exams, are for us uh, chemistry and histology. Uh, since COVID has been only written, but before COVID was a written and then an oral, like you had to do the written test to go to then take the oral. And well, uh, also speaking of first year, Molecular biology, which uh, in, in the Italian course we take with also half of biochemistry, uh, is written. And you can, after that, do an oral if you wish to get a better mark. And uh, we have uh, written anatomy, but I believe they are not going to have because they their anatomy course is made uh, differently like we have two anatomy exams whether they have one anatomy exam uh, of 12 credits and other eight credits which are divided between other clinical subjects and yeah as their course the, as their anatomy course is different i believe this is going to be 
an oral exam like our anatomy 2 exam. And uh, the only other exam that comes to my mind right now, which I know is written, is, but this is not from first year, is dermatology, which like uh, weirdly for a clinical is a written exam. Right, so it is uh, mainly yeah, uh, is, oral exams is, though. And yeah, mainly oral, just in first year, they're gonna have these, some of these written exams. And yeah, obviously I didn't say this before, but physics and yeah, chemistry, I, I already said that, and the stats are going to be written. And also like, uh, mm, yeah, they are gonna have, you probably had to, the safety on work course, which is a written test, but that's not a big deal actually. No, no, it's not. Um, so sounds like a pretty like classic uh, Italian thing. What about during like COVID times? How were the classes organized? Do you know if this going into this year, they're going to still be online? Are they going to be like mixed? Are the exams online? Uh, an, inter an, inter an interesting question because uh, this uh, was, um, yeah, classes are going to be 100% in person with no um with no uh, virtual classes like there is not going to be uh, streamings live streamings no live streamings and uh professors are although uh, obliged to publish on our moodle i don't know if you're familiar yeah yeah the online the platform, platform we yeah. use for uh, e-learning uh, they are. Uh, they have this obligation to publish some audio, video material, which could be um, registrations, uh, recording classes, classes recordings, or uh, can also be other videos like videos where they talk about uh, stuff they don't do in class or other. But they have these. They must publish some videos, even videos they haven't done, like videos they found somewhere but they have this obligation uh, apart from publishing the course materials, which are like PowerPoints and other documents. Cool, that's really but interesting. Yeah, we gonna, we no virtual. 100% classes, yeah, in person. And also all exams are going to be in person. Okay, that, that's, that's a pretty like, because in Sapienza we're doing like half and half, uh, like, like one half of the class goes online and one half of the class goes in person and then we switch every week. So I'm really surprised to hear Parma's going completely uh, in person. I mean, it's kind of cool yeah. though, I guess. This is really bold actually for the time yeah. in, but this is also cool because this seems pretty normal, I could say. Yeah. And yeah, also for them to know that there is no social distancing in classes. We have the mask mandate, but uh, we can stay uh, really close. Also because we don't have uh, rooms that big to stay in, uh, well, in the Italian calls, we are more than 250, but uh, yeah, we are- That is so big! <laughs> we are 260 and we don't have um, rooms that big, but they are gonna be 100 and yeah maybe for them it will be a bit better so yeah no social distancing mask mandates and also as for italian uh, regulation they are going to need uh, the european union covid certificate or as of university of pharma regulation if they and if they have been vaccinated with vaccines not approved by EMA, uh, they could also attend classes with no hassle, just they're gonna talk with our services so that they can sort it out. But yeah, we are open also to people which have been vaccinated with vaccines not uh, available in Europe and also to people uh, which uh, because of health reasons, uh, which are well present in a Italian Ministry of Health um, note uh, can't be vaccinated well they also have to uh, sort that out with the university government but they can also attend classes okay yeah that's that's really 
bold, I guess. I, I, I can't imagine something like that happening uh, in our class. So I know that you're only in second year and of course with COVID, it's been really hard to you know, gauge the level of practical experience. But the first question I kind of want to ask is, are there like cadaver dissections uh, in Parma? Do you get to do dissections or a prosection? How well, does that work? For what I know, in the Italian course, we don't uh, have cadaver dissections. Cadaver dissections. Uh, we just uh, get to um, get to the um, yeah the amphitheater. We have these theater-like rooms with the yeah the seats. Uh, at um, which are like half a circle, and I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't. I'm not. <laughs> I don't have the words to explain this in English right now. It's okay. We have. We get to see some models, models or real models, but yeah, we are not. We are. We don't get to see a real cadaver uh, real time cadaver dissections. Just models that someone made before. Yeah, that's and that's pretty I, standard with all the public universities, though I believe. Um, well, for what I know from some friends in Bologna and Modena, but also for speaking for the Italian course, they get to see real cadaver dissections. But they get to watch it; they don't get to partake in it. That's the difference. Oh yeah, to watch only to watch. Yeah, so that would be a pro section, which a lot of the universities have. But the distinction that a lot of foreign students want is the dissection, which is where the students get to do the. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, cutting. Um, oh, so. I don't, yeah, I don't believe this is a thing, a real thing in Italy, like to do some stuff for real. It's not, I just ask it in every single interview because we always get students being like, oh, but in this university, I heard they can do it. And it's like, no, you heard wrong. <laughs> so I just always ask this question to prove to everyone that the standard is the same. There are no special universities, um, but cool. So other than cadaver dissections, could you walk me a bit through the practical experience? Like when do you start clinicals? What would a clinical day look like? Uh, this is separate from the tirocinio, of course. So. Like, what can you, what can students expect uh, for their practical experience? In the English course, they are starting, uh, at least for Italian standards, really, really early with practical experience as they're going to have their first clerkships and clinicals in the second terms of second year, as they are going to have a, well, a research clerkship uh, which accounts for six CFUs. And they're going to also have a clinical microbiology and infectious diseases, which is, uh, if I'm not wrong, and I'm not, their first clinical ever, uh, which accounts for some eight CFUs. And yeah, then all uh, third year and the fourth year are going and obviously fifth year are going to be full blown uh, clinicals so that in last uh, last year sixth year they're going to be uh, basically free from lectures and exams and they're just gonna have the uh, two uh, clerkships one which is listed really uh, ambiguously as medicine and surgery clerkship number three and another that is the uh, clerkship they have to um, to do to get licensed here in Italy and also in the rest of Europe as this is an European degree. Uh, so um, sorry the research one actually sounds pretty cool and unique. Like, wh what can you tell me about the research clerkship? The research clerkship is uh, basically a course where they're gonna get the basis about um, about our um, about research methodology, which they are also. Uh, studying a bit are going to study a bit in first year as they have like a course that is literally called research methodology and i believe 
uh, they're also just gonna have some experience in a lab but uh, I wouldn't tell uh, other stuff because there is really not um, lots of detail about that available now just some lines in the pamphlets they made uh, like there is um, there is no per there is not there is still not a description of this course. There is no professor assigned. So really, I wouldn't get to talk more about this as there is not much detail. But there is going to be, as uh, here in Parma, um, on the uh, degree course website for every subject, there is um, a web page where there are listed the professor and uh, some details like um some details like how this the exam is the complete uh, syllabus and how the course is going to uh, the main stuff on those pages are how the exam is going to take place and what is going to be like or if or are written uh what are the um, uh, the books the professor advises to buy, uh, which are what are you going to to study and to learn, and another important thing, uh, which are the prerequisite prerequisites for that subject, because uh, as in uh, many Italian and maybe foreign, I don't know really how in foreign universities it works uh, there are prerequisites that you that are other subjects that you have to have passed so that you can take a certain exam yes so for every subject those are listed uh, in, the, so, so in the page yeah like but also professors are going to talk about those in first lect in first lesson le first lecture of that subject so from the prerequisites aside uh you know like in some universities you have to pass everything to be able to continue with the second year do you know if in parma you get like multiple attempts and you can continue with your year even if you haven't passed all of your exams in parma you can uh, continue even if you haven't passed all the exams and like yeah at least for the italian course but i i believe it's going to be like this also for the english one uh you don't have to have passed all the subjects from one year to pass to the next year and also um yeah that's pretty it uh the only thing is that to uh take the license or internship you have to have passed all the exams up and comprised for year. Yeah, so it's the same same and for yeah, us. Yeah, this is the only kind of block we have. Block okay. We have. Do you know if there's going to be an English certificate or an Italian certificate necessary to go into clinical or to enroll? I don't believe there is a need for any um, certificate to do the clinicals, but uh, I don't, I haven't heard anything about this. So, but I don't believe there is going to be any. But also, I can tell that our university offers uh, Italian courses for foreigners. These are based in Parma, but uh, there is probably going to be some recordings or stuff like that made available on the yeah the Moodle that here in Parma we call LA portal and what else yeah the English English certificate um, also here I just uh, quickly read the public call or bando in Italian and there isn't any uh, it isn't needed as uh, as of what I I read. You can, if you have one, uh, just upload that on universitally. 
but that's not mandatory and that is not going to be any additional points in the ranking okay um so i know we kind of just went over clinical experience but i saw on when i was writing the article and on the course website that uh and your course president has actually the english course president has said that there's going to be unique uh studying abroad opportunities for the english course of parma like i know that every university has erasmus and there's erasmus plus and there's also the traineeship and there's also sism but there's some like ambiguity ambigu uh, i can't speak some vague information i'll say about if parma is going to be offering something even more than uh classic erasmus and sism things yeah that's really vague and uh, as of now i can say um not to uh, like speak badly of my university or of professor vitale which is a really good professor and person in general because uh, there isn't any solid stuff right now going on i believe he's probably working on that and they're probably working on that but um as of now as are we are here there is no agreement already made but he said and as he said they're probably doing this uh just covid wasn't the right time to do this uh they're working on agreements with hospitals in other european countries uh agreements additional to uh, like Erasmus and other programs that we have in Italy and specifically in Parma because we also have another program called Overworld and agreements that uh, could enable students to do those clerkships the very very ambiguous ones called med medicine and surgery clerkships uh, in uh, other hospitals not Piacenza one uh, but other hospitals and uh institutions all across europe they're probably working on some um really um like one-to-one -one agreements with that certain institution between pharma and the institution in, in particular i mean it kind of makes sense that maybe like before the first year class even comes in you can't really say what's going to happen five years down yeah. the line which is when yeah, these mean, would come i in. didn't want to be rude or harsh but yeah there is no stuff so i i wanted to be honest yeah no it's it's um, good because you, you don't want a able... ton of students like a hundred students to come in expecting something yeah, and then yeah, exactly. not have it but yeah the reality is that there is nothing right now but as i know professor vitale is probably really working hard on that and get and going to get that done and also um about this as we were talking about this um, they're gonna uh, have their classes in the Collegio Alberoni, uh, which is uh, a bit far from the center of Piacenza, is some five or six kilometers, if I'm not wrong, uh, but still in the city, like you could get there by bike or well, foot if you want, but yeah that's technically possible but i don't uh, see why anyone would do that from the center of piacenza at least and this is just uh, well this is basically in front uh, of the università cattolica campus which has its own library and a canteen which um and i didn't find any info on it which but I believe which are going to be also accessible to the medicine and surgery students, the library and the canteen. Um, I'm just looking at a map of Piacenza right now yeah. and I can show it to people. So where will the... Uh... So Piacenza, first of all, is also slightly separate from Parma, right? It's like a 40 minute train ride. And then yeah, exactly. the English course is going to be exactly where in Piacenza? in the Collegio Alberoni, which is, I uh, believe you got one Italian, so you can show them. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Oh, it looks, oh, it looks really nice. Oh, it's an art museum. I know yeah, you sent me the photos. Yeah, it's museum, but the, okay. well, the, gal the gallery is closed. 
the gallery is closed right now. That's um, that was an old monastery. Uh -huh. Now it's a seminary actually, uh, but the University of Parma rented a room in that space, so they are going to stay in this well, really beautiful, conferring a room for meetings and seminars. And they're gonna have in this beautiful room with tapestry on the walls. Yeah. Uh, all their lectures for first year. Uh, what would you say the central point of Piacenza is? Just so I can like. Uh... Oh, a Cavalli Square, Piazza Cavalli. Piazza Cavalli. Okay, perfect. Okay, so it's actually if I have the correct space, it says that it's uh three point six kilometers. Right, I got that wrong. No, 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 it's fine. I think it's better, right? Like, no, it seems no, a lot yeah, more... Yeah, it's, it's better, obviously, it's better. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like it's like a 12-minute cycle, according to Google Maps, or there's uh, two buses. So that's pretty handy, yeah. I would say. Okay. On, yeah, on weekdays, there are, going, there are buses uh, running every 10 minutes to the center and to the train station. So that's pretty convenient, actually. Okay, so uh, kind of a thing. I know, um, again, this is all going to be in the document, but could you walk me through the university fees and the available scholarships? Are there like merit-based? Are there yeah, needs-based? Mm -hmm. So um, university fees for the medicine and surgery course are just like the Italian course ones. And this is a uh, this is these are going to be a flat fee of one hundred and fifty six euros. That all um, that is the regional fee, regional fee plus some stamp duty. That all students, regardless of scholarships or stuff like that, have to pay. And then uh, if you uh, if your uh, ISEE is a is over 70,000, you have to pay the full rate, which is um, uh, something like 2,200 euros. So still very cheap. Yeah, still very cheap. Also the full rate, at least compared to some other Italian universities. Uh, but this can go uh, down uh, down to zero actually and uh, based on well for the first year just based on the ISEE indicator because they're gonna not they're not gonna have neither merit or um, seniority of like uh, we get discounts um, based on the seniority of our um, enrollment in the university so Students that have been enrolled for more years pay a bit less, but that's not a big factor actually. It's more merit and ISEE. And so, yeah, only on is ISEE and up there, the, the tax free area where they just pay the 156 euros, and which is also the a limit to get into the scholarships we will later talk about is 23,000 euros of ISEE. So uh, scholarships. Scholarships uh, are, well, the, the most common scholarships students get uh, at the University of Parma are from the a uh, regional agency, a re the regional agency of Emilia Romagna, which is the region where Parma and Piacenza are, which is called ERGO, ERGO, and is based on the ISEE indicator and on meeting some merit requirements uh, during your studies. You have to um, you have to pass uh, some. Uh, you have to pass a certain number of exams, which is measured in credits. So, to make an example, to, to continue um, to get the scholarship, also for the 
following year, you must have some 30 credits at the end of the academic year. Also, you uh, uh, and also you should have the um, income requirements, but yeah. And you could, you have also some, um, you would have to also give exams dur during the, the year to get the installments. Like uh, if you manage to do a certain number of exams in, because you get uh, right after you, you make the, if you're eligible and they have enough money, you get to the first installment right after they make the ranking. But to get to the full amount, you get you have to get uh, following installments, which are given only if you um, if you pass certain exams, also measured in credits um, by certain dates. Like you could get an installment right in February if you manage to give an, uh, enough um, exams in February. Uh, instead. If you don't manage to, you could get second and third installment in June or in July, I believe. Uh, if you, yeah, if you manage to do the to take the credits you have um, by that date, but this is all explained with uh, with um, precise dates and precise number of credits you have to get in the in the guide that. Ergo itself made available on the on its website, uh, which is also available in English. Also uh, about Ergo, you uh, have to uh, go on Ergo website and um, and compile a form to get the discount based on the Isaiah indicator to get a discount on tuition. That's the way in Parma and in most uh, Emilia-Romagna universities to get discounted tuition based on EASY and other stuff. That's the only and unique way going through Ergo's website or in a, a CAF, CAF, which are public offices where they help you with taxes and stuff like that, and where you could also get your EASY sorted out. Uh, that those two are the only ways to get the discount on tuition. And there is an important term to remember, which is the 3rd of November at 6 p.m., which is the term to um, make your, um, yeah, to send in your request for discounted tuition. Those then is uh, approved if it's all right. If it's all right, uh, it's approved automatically, but uh, you have to send that in by the 3rd of November at 6 p.m. or uh, you would have to pay the 2,200 euros. The last thing I just want to ask, I, we, yeah. brief, we briefly mentioned it and then I kind of want to talk about the city and not the university itself, is uh, kind of like the facilities. I know that you know, the classroom you showed, it's really amazing and I'm going to put pictures of it. But do you know anything else about the facilities, whether it's like libraries or if it's like the hospital? Because you also told me that they're having a really cool hospital yeah, built. Obviously. So could you tell me just about like all of the facilities that will be available to the English course students? Yeah, so as of now, there aren't actually that much facilities available for them apart from their classroom because they um the headquarters of the english course are are still going to be built uh, because in piacenza there is uh it's the, the piacenza hospital but they are renovating an old military hospital which is going to be piacenza second hospital but also the um the headquarters for the english course with its classrooms and in most of its locations and also yeah it's going to be the place where they're gonna uh, take clinicals and the clerkships but as of now they have the classroom in the college alberoni and they can also uh, benefit from all the 
public libraries of Piacenza, which are really a lot actually, and they can find them on the website. Ledger Piac, uh, we could maybe put a link something sure. um with also yeah also like the um degree course website that yeah i'll put i'll put all the somewhere. links in the comments in is the description, there maybe. Yeah. is there any uh 24 hour libraries no the reason the reason neither in parma which is a university with a really higher student population and this is before of covid um yeah this is basically before of covid before covid we in parma had a library not open 24 hours but that was open at least um up to 24 so yeah yeah uh, midnight and what else uh so yeah most libraries since covid uh have been open uh in the morning and in the afternoon but it's rare, at least here in Parma or Piacenza, to find libraries that stay open um, over 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. And also, most libraries uh, close for lunch. Oh, okay. That's that's kind of unique. But... Important to remember, yeah. <laughs> most university libraries here in Parma close from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. That's quite interesting i've never heard of that before yeah other other facilities uh, well an important thing to mention is that uh, at least according to ergo website there is no uh, ergo canteen in uh, piacenza so if they get the uh, if they get the mensa um, thing yeah the mensa thing for, as part of the scholarship they better get that converted into cash or if they want yeah i believe it's possible is it actually i thought you were making a joke i thought it was impossible to like convert oh, the benefits I, I believe it's possible to convert the canteen benefit in cash but i oh. also believe they're going to get to give you less than the actual amount but also um, another thing you could do, and that in this case I I advise all the, of them not to do, uh, don't convert part of your scholarship into um, well canteen credit because you were you won't be able to use that because the only ergo location in Piacenza is a cafeteria near the hospital where they are not going to go. Anyways, as that's not where going, where they are okay. gonna have. This is really uh, good information. This is really important. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a bit sad, but they cannot, um, they cannot uh, really uh, count on the um, credit for the Mensa or Cantina part of scholarship. Cool. Okay, so I think that basically covers everything that uh, I wanted to ask about the university. I'm just going to quickly go through the uh, yeah, right. inst Instagram things and then we'll just move on and talk a little bit about the city because I think that's the most important part of the conversation. Yeah, so one of the thing is, are there research opportunities? So we talked briefly about the yeah, clerkship. The research clerkship, but also um, for my experience, well, not direct experience for the experience i heard from uh, older students most of the doctors and professors in pharma are, are really nice and if you ask them politely most of them will would allow you with them in the department or would allow you with them in the lab if you wanted to do any extra clerkship or any research so yeah most professors and this is just starting back since COVID is getting a bit better. Uh, most professors will be happy to allow students with them in the departments or labs. Just like don't ask them when you are in preclinicals because that may sound a bit weird. I mean, at least uh, try to have given physio before you ask. Probably a good also idea. Because that would have been that would have been that would 
be a bit pointless if you get into the depart into the departments and to see patients uh if you still had a given physio like what what will why would you go there to work for like a nurse particularly that would be a bit pointless yeah okay so i think that basically covers all of the university questions i wanted to ask so i'm going to end this part of the video and in the next right. part of the video we'll do the city based stuff cool i'm gonna stop recording i don't know if you want to wave to people if they made it this far <laughs> but <laughs> we've been talking